Hey, what's up, you guys? This is Rob from McGay Guy Plays, and today on the Quick Draw, this kitty's got me all kinds of confused when we take a look at the Panthera. So straight out of the gate, I knew that the Panthera was going to get some kind of buff, as it didn't quite deliver what they had marked on the tin. There was something that just didn't feel quite right about it, so I hung back for a day. Check out my ranting at a gay guy plays on Twitter if you need proof to see if they were going to make any tweaks. Now that the buffs are in place, it's time to take a second look at our new kitty. Now, I'm going to be frank with you, something still feels very off, so keep an eye out for an annotation that I'm going to put right here to let you know if there are any further changes. Now, you can pick up the Panthera's blueprints in the market for 20,000 credits. Just be aware that it does require a fully built Hiku and Miter as a part of its component cost. However, if you've seen and heard enough of Captain Vor and cannot stand one more moment in his presence, you can always pick it up in the market, pre-built, along with the Catalyst and Weapon slot for 225 plat. Now, the Panthera's primary damage type is slashing with a small amount of impact and an even smaller amount of puncture. As I'm sure you all know by now, slashing is great for fleshy targets like Corpus Crewmen and the Infested. However, with its lack of puncture, the Panthera is going to need a little more oomph against armored targets. So, as always, be sure to equip the appropriate elemental combo in order to deal the optimal amount of damage. So let's start off with the easy stuff. Its primary fire mode launches a saw blade projectile much like the miters. However, it's semi-automatic, meaning that there is no charge time whatsoever. The saw blades will ricochet off of enemy units and structures, allowing them to hit multiple targets if they happen to be within the bounce trajectory. Do note that this does not have a neat punch through. Aside from that, its base damage, fire rate, and status chance are fairly low, and it has absolutely no critical potential. Now, while some of that can be forgiven, what absolutely drives the final nail in the Panthera's coffin is the fact that its primary fire mode consumes 5 ammo for every one blade fired. Think of this as a slash based projectile version of the Grimlock that uses up 5 times the ammo per shot but has less status, less damage, no critical chance, and you can't even zoom in for headshots. Now, the reason you can't zoom in is its unique secondary fire mode. Using the zoom function will send out a spinning blade approximately 5 meters in front of you dealing continuous damage to the first enemy in its path. Again, it has no innate punch through, but after some testing, it seems like punch through mods do affect it. However, the new stagger mechanic makes it a bit harder to tell if it's just enemy units becoming misaligned, but I'll give it the benefit of the doubt. Aside from its recent damage increase, the only other positive to this mode is the fact that it does not consume ammo until the blade connects with an enemy, which is a good thing since this weapon is extremely ammo inefficient. In fact, within the first 20 enemies on several T3 missions, even with punch through mods equipped, I had already burned through half of its ammo, which to be honest speaks volumes of how ineffective this weapon still currently is. Now speaking of things that need to up their game, can we talk? Okay, so basically the Panthera is the kind of sex you had in high school. It performs decently at lower levels, however, as time goes by and you start gearing up for late game, you begin to realize how shit it actually was. See, the fact is, it was kind of fun and kind of awkward, and while it was satisfying at the time, once you've got some experience under your belt, you learn to expect a little bit more. Like blowjobs without teeth, or gag reflexes, or knowing that there are a limited amount of places penises can go without making the situation extremely uncomfortable, or coming to terms with the fact that handjobs are just plain disrespectful. See, once you've grown past the star chart and start progressing toward late game, you don't have time for all of that little nonsensical high school shit. You need the Boltor, Soma, and Paris Primes of the world to put it down and do the damn thing. See, when you're all grown, there isn't any more of that sneaking around bullshit and having to be quiet so your parents don't catch you. You got your own damn place where you can fuck however, whenever, and at whatever volume you feel like. And with that kind of freedom, you expect it to be done right. Holla fucking Luya. Now let's get back to the quick drop. So all in all, the Panthera feels a bit underpowered even after the changes. The concept is definitely kind of fun, if not slightly awkward, but without the power to back it up, its mechanics definitely feel like they get in the way. In fact, it's like they took the two most ammo and efficient weapon modes and put them into one gun. And I think one of the biggest issues for me is the fact that it uses both the Hiku and Miter, which are halfway decent weapons in their own right, in order to make a weapon that I would say is slightly worse in comparison. However, it does come with a dash slot and not a D slot, so that's something to be happy about, right? To be honest with you, I wouldn't be surprised if there are still more buffs that come for the Panthera, but as it stands, this is one ammo-hungry pussy, and it's packing a gnarly set of teeth. 
So thank you all for watching another episode of the Quick Draw. If you haven't caught them, be sure to catch my previous Quick Draw on the Tapedo, as well as the stand spotlight for staves. Now, don't forget to do the thing that I ask you to do at the end of every one of these, and as always, stay tuned for more awkward vaginal references here at A Gay Guy Plays. Okay, does anyone else feel like the word pussy is just really gross? I don't know, it just sounds so, like, cavernous and, like, damp.